Hi, my name is Wilman Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with acclaimed New York City composer, performer, producer, Jonah Bobo. For more on Jonah, you can read more about him right below this video, but in the meantime, here is a sneak peek at the amazing talent of Jonah Bobo. It's the way that the pen hits the paper Jonah, how are you? I'm doing very well today, Will. Thank you. Very good, my friend. Well, I am so excited that the audience has got a sneak peek of your incredible talent. Jonah, I want to know, where were you born and when did you realize you had this gift of music? I was born in Mount Sinai Hospital, <laughs> not too far from where I am now. Um, when did I realize? I always really loved to sing. And my parents sang to me a lot when I was a kid. Neither of them are, are professional musicians, but um, they sang to me a lot when I was a kid. And, and I, I think that my, my pull to play music was actually more from, from a desire to be able to accompany myself while I would sing. So I, I was really interested in playing guitar, mostly because of how obsessed I was with Green Day when I was eight or nine years old. That was that was the big push for me was I got to learn all these Green Day songs. And then, <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the first song you ever wrote and what was it? First song I ever wrote? Well, it would have to be something that I wrote with uh, my, one of my best friends, Nikki, who he and I, we've known each other for our whole lives and we still collaborate. And uh, he's one of the members of, of my band right now, Proper T. And so we're still collaborating. He also produced the album that's coming up with me and mixed the entire thing and mastered it. But we used to write a lot of music together when we were 11 and 12, just, you know, at his parents' house with our guitars, trying to be heady and a little bit of angsty and stick it to the man. But I would say probably the first one that I can think of would, would be, it was this song called Night in the Clouds that Nikki and I wrote together when we were about 11 years old. That, uh... A nice esoteric yeah, song by 11 year olds. Yeah, esoteric. Yeah, we were, we were some pretty heady kids. But Jonah, I love that your child's a friend and you are now just, you're still jamming, doing the thing. And I want you to talk to me twofold, a little bit about your band and then also this upcoming album. Yeah, well, my band is called Property. It's a very exciting new venture we, we just formed in the last couple of months. Um, it is an amalgamation, I guess, of two bands that we had or, or that we played with in college. One was called Butter, and that was mine and Nikki's band. And then there's another band called Mungo's List that two of our good friends from Jersey, they were a trio and Nikki and I are just so obsessed with their music. Nikki produced their album uh, with them. And I, I played on their album on some of the tracks. And um, their drummer, the third piece of their trio, moved out to Colorado earlier this year. So they were kind of like, all right, well, it's, we want to play some music, but we, we don't really have a band anymore. We're just two people. And Nikki and I were like, oh, well, we love your music and we're two other people. Let's make some more music. So those, those two duos became one quartet and um, it's been the absolute best time. I, I love making music with those guys. I love the music that they write. Writing music with them is such a fun process because we all really understand each other very well. And it's a, it's a big old dance party. I mean, we, we, just, we just love to make dance music. Hey, I mean, look at it. In a business that's already tough enough to be able to do it with people you like and then also you vibe with. And I, I'm always so fascinated why I asked that question of 
you know, how with bands, especially how they form and how sometimes, you know, it's just like, it's like you kind of pick up people along the way in the journey. And then sometimes you hit a sweet spot that it seems like you found. Exactly. Yeah, it, it very much feels like that. And all four of us have been in a lot of different bands in the last five years and are in other bands right now that we're all playing with, you know, now that the world is, is sort of picking itself back up and live music is returned, at least in this city. So we're, we're all having, um, you know, a great time getting to play out together again. But then when we all come home, it's like, this is where the magic is really happening. I love it. Well, speak to me about your business venture, Be My Band. Yes. When you, when you came up with it and, um, you know, how it's helped you as an artist, especially during these times where, you know, there hasn't been that much live performance. Yeah, I was actually just, just before I got on with you, I was working be my band studio um basically the the elevator pitch is i want i wanted to hearken back to the days where a singer songwriter could go to a studio and bring their you know their single or their collection of songs or their album whatever it is and the the studio has the session musicians already there waiting for you ready to play your music and all you need to do is show up with your charts or, or whatever you have um, and I, I just always have really, you know, romanticized that idea. And I, I love thinking about what music studios were like in the 70s and in the 80s. And it's just not like that anymore. Now that, you know, every, there's, there's all these prosumer um, tools and everyone can make music from their bedroom, which is such a wonderful thing. But I wanted to instill a little bit of that vibe into this virtual and over the pandemic, a lot of remote recording world so you come to my studio the session players are all there it is me i am all the session players <laughs> and you I'm are the, the wizard player. behind the curtain i'm the wizard behind the curtain and my job is to make the curtain as beautiful as possible and make it seem like you had a bunch of people on your record well, Jonah, i really want people to will bring other people in you know i don't play every instrument so yeah <laughs> and friends but luckily i have a really good network of musicians and i can pretty much get you any instrument you need jonah that's incredible and i love that old school romanticism that you're bringing into the 21st century also a business savvy person as you are to be doing that as well and you know in looking forward as things start to open up what are you most looking forward to performing live again <sighs> what am i most looking to well, I'm going on a, a little tour with a good friend of mine, Julia Gargano, this month, oh, cool. September. We're going Where about? on the Star Sounds tour. Um, so we're hitting, uh, we start in DC and then Boston, New York City, Philly, Chicago, and LA. And I'm so excited because this is the first tour I'll have ever been on. So I'm, I'm, just so elated and it's coming up so soon. So lucky me, I'm most excited about it and it's right around the corner. That's amazing, Jonah. And you know, I want you to dig into now a little bit about your upcoming album, the title, the concept, how it came about, when people can get it, stream it, all of the things. Yes, I am extremely excited um, about the release of this album. It is called New Grass Sweet. The title comes from Basically, I, I was just hearing a lot of this word new grass being used to describe artists and acts that I really like. And I, the, the best definition that I can give for it is when you get a bunch of bluegrass instruments together, like banjo, mandolin, fiddle, dobro, uh, upright bass, but you're not playing traditional bluegrass music. So that, that opens the door to many, many other styles. Uh, you got new grass. So if you got if you got bluegrass instruments, but you're not playing traditional stuff. That's new grass. So I there's there's a bunch of artists that I really look up to that write in this style. And it was actually uh, a little over a year ago I was working on an original musical with a good friend of mine from college, and we wanted the sound world to be new grass. What's that was the name the of the musical? Really Who's the collaborator? Album. It's called Mine. Musical is called Mine. Uh, my collaborator is the wonderful Elliot Vitas. And um, they and I really wanted to, to put this 
sound on a stage. That was the whole impetus for the musical. I was like, I love the sound of this music. I, I, I need to see it on stage. Not that it's never been done before, because there are of course some bluegrass musicals, but I've never heard a new grass musical. So we were working on that. Anyway, a lot of, a lot of writing on the banjo and on the mandolin. And from those sessions, I, I had a bunch of surplus material that didn't make it into the show. So I was like, well, I, I really like this stuff. I, I don't want it to just go nowhere. Maybe I can stitch it all together. And I stitched it together. And what came out was a 25 minute continuous piece of music. Seems like it's almost like a Rhapsody too. You know, I love the way you yeah. say sweet, but you know, the fact, and this is what I love talking with all artists about, you know, even though I mainly work within the music theater, you know, I love speaking with artists who might be writing for one assignment. And then like, that's kind of finished, but it sparks another, idea into a totally different medium it, and that's just the excitement of being in the sandbox and not losing that childlike wonder that you have jonah absolutely without a doubt wow that's incredible jonah uh, i could speak with you forever i am so grateful for you speaking with me today thank you so much for your time and for the audience watching for more on the incredible jonah bobo you can read more about him right below this video